The Asus VivoBook S15 is an awesome, well-rounded, everyday-use laptop that doesn't break the bank, and we take a look at the details coming up on this week's tech review. What is going on everybody? Welcome to another video. So the VivoBook is holding a special place in my heart just because it's essentially the first and really the only laptop that we've ever done an actual review on. And granted, the video probably could have used some work. So today, I hope to be a little bit more thorough with this review. We've got another one today. It's the Asus VivoBook S15 as well, but this one is the Ryzen 5, specifically the 3500U. So today we're gonna to go through all of the different types of hardware specs, the ergonomics of it, how comfortable it is, the battery life, all of the things that you would typically want to find in a laptop, and also take a look at some benchmarks in what it can do in like the gaming and, and editing and things like that. So let's go ahead and just jump right in. This is the F512DA. It does feature the Ryzen 5 3500U. That is a four core, eight thread, 2.1 base, and a 3.7 boost clock CPU. It does have the Vega 8 onboard graphics with two gigs of dedicated video RAM and eight gigs of DDR4 system RAM. As far as storage solutions, you're looking at a Kingston 256 gig solid state drive with the room to add a secondary drive. Lifting the lid, you are presented with a matte finished 15.6 inch IPS panel running at a resolution of 1920 by 1080 p a 60 hertz refresh rate, and a viewing angle of 178 degrees. The bezel surrounding the screen features a built-in HD webcam and microphone and measures in only at 5.7 millimeters. Overall, the screen is nice to look at and it does get the job done for the average user, but it fails to deliver perfect colors with only a 68% sRGB rating. It does have an HDMI out that you can use to plug in an additional monitor in case you needed to. As far as your other external connections go, you have two USB 2.0, a one USB 3.0 and one USB type C. Other stuff includes a micro SD card reader and a dual function three and a half millimeter headphone input. In addition to that, your wireless connections include Bluetooth 4.1 and Wi-Fi 5. The overall weight is three and a half pounds, making it very easy to transport and does have a battery life around four to six hours, just depending on your use case. Now, if you do need a charge on the go, it also does have a small footprint charger that is also very easy to transport. The keyboard is backlit, has a nice solid typing feel to it with just over a single millimeter of travel. It's like 1.4 millimeters to be exact. The keyboard also has good spacing in between the keys. That way, when you're going to town on your college paper, you help eliminate any type of fat fingering scenario. When sitting on a flat surface, the screen hinge does provide a two degree lift, making typing slightly easier and a bit more comfortable. I ran this guy through some various testing to get an overall idea of different use case scenarios. When I did the review on the last one, I had a lot of comments asking if they could edit videos or photos, coding, play any games. So hopefully this will answer those questions. Now I will also link the URLs to each one of the tests that I did for those that want to look into the details. So enjoy. Now, just some final thoughts on the laptop. This laptop did release in January of 2019, so it is a little bit older, but it still, even today, still has plenty of power under the hood to get your basic use stuff done, even maybe mix in a little bit of light gaming. Now, as much as I would like to, if you're into photography or any type of like videography or something that needs a calibrated screen, I would definitely steer clear of this one because again, it only has a 68% in the sRGB field. So I would definitely look at something that's a little bit more premium. Anyways, guys, if you're looking for something that is just a great all-arounder laptop, the Asus VivoBook S15. This is the Ryzen 5. They do make a Ryzen 7 model that we may end up doing a review on. I'm not really sure yet. I would definitely consider looking at this and I'll definitely post the link in the video description below. Anyways, guys, that is going to wrap it up for this week's tech review. Thank you guys all so much for watching. I certainly appreciate it. I hope you got something out of it. And if you did, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And of course, ring that bell so you guys don't miss out on any type of future reviews. And we will see you on the next one. Peace.